What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to the episode of the Always Compete Seahawks podcast. I am Sam. That is Mike. And today we will be breaking down the Seahawks 26 to 17 loss versus the Los Angeles Rams at home on Thursday night football. We're just going to be kind of rambling, going over our thoughts from the game, uh, saying what needs to be fixed, saying what we thought went well. And um, I'm just going to kick us off with, honestly, I thought a lot of stuff went well for us tonight, um, which is usually rare for me to say during a loss, uh, especially when we technically lose by two possessions, even if it's just one point more than what a usual one possession loss would look like. But, um, you know, it, I would say that a couple things did go well for us tonight in the sense that I feel like the offense was playing pretty well. I feel like we had a lot of plays where we schemed receivers open. Um, I feel like there was a lot of plays where Alex Collins had really nice lanes. I feel like the pass blocking tonight, besides a couple hiccups here and there, which is bound to happen versus the Rams defensive line, I feel like we had maybe our best pass blocking game of the year so far. Uh, there were some plays where Russ and Geno Smith were just sitting back there for multiple, multiple seconds. We're talking five, six, seven, eight seconds, just being able to sit and look. And most of those didn't turn into anything because of really good coverage for Rams. But still, you got to give credit to the pass to the pass blocking tonight. I feel like uh, I feel like our linebackers were okay. I feel like our Bobby Wagner and them made plays whenever they had to. Uh, Al Woods and Puna Ford are machines, monsters. They were consistently dominant tonight getting in the backfield, getting pressure, the whole thing. And, um, you know, I, I think that, I think that, you know, like I said, I feel like Shane Waldron called his best game. I feel like Shane Waldron called his best game so far as a coach. I feel like playing a defense that is has all this talent to be able to be able to consistently move the ball on the run and in the pass was very good considering no Chris Carson for the entire game and no Russ for basically the entire second half. Mm -hmm. So I feel like a lot of people are, are, are forgetting that if A, we kick that field goal, um, we kick that field goal in the first half, in the first quarter, which I guess you could blame Shane Waldron for. Um, I do like the idea to go for it on fourth down. I'm not blaming him for that. But I, that play call was dumb, though. The play call was really dumb. To run, to run, run, it, to run it, I think it was a dumb play call. I think it was a dumb yeah. play call. But um, I also feel like Shane Waldron probably didn't call the play, maybe realizing that Aaron Donald would have been on that side. They do move Aaron. They did move Aaron Donald around quite a lot today. Sometimes we've been matched up versus Dwayne Brown. Sometimes we've been matched up versus Brandon Shell. Sometimes we've been matched up versus Damian Lewis or Dave Jackson. But you know, obviously, so he had a big movement game tonight. Um, I feel like our receivers were really solid. I feel like DK had a really nice game. Tara Lockett had plays where he just got open. The one that really hits me is the one where he got wide open and Russ missed him because he maybe broke his finger. Um, on that and Aaron Donald got pressure. So, you know, overall, I feel like, I feel like this is, this is a, a very nice building block game considering next week we play a defense that is currently playing much better than the Rams have uh, so far this year in the Pittsburgh Steelers who are currently one of the top defenses in the NFL. I just want to see how we match up, Mike, I'm going to give you the floor. Let's start with positives and then we'll segue into the negatives a little bit later. Say positive. DK Metcalf was was a beast. Um, I think I think the the quarterback play was pretty good. Gino played well. Russ played well. Um, other than obviously the two picks. Honestly, they, honestly, real fast before I just want to hop in for a second. Really reassuring really to to see Gino play so well, mm -hmm. knowing that we might be able to have a fallback option. It was kind of considered that oh Russ is gone, the Seahawks suck. Maybe yeah. not. All yeah. I can really say is maybe not. So that's all I wanted to add. I might come to let you continue. Um, I thought, you know, the quarterbacks did good. DK was good. Um, but honestly, I think you're looking at this game from a much more optimistic standpoint than I am, which is, is good. Don't get me wrong. But when I look at this game, I see our defense was awful. They were awful. Right. Secondary. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 obviously, obviously, that was going to be in my negatives. Right. 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 Uh, no, I mean, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. So, that, that's a, yeah. that's for sure. Negative. Um, and I think not only the secondary, but, you know, last year our defense was terrible through five weeks. This this year I just saw the stat. We're like 50 yards better or something. So we're still terrible. Um, and we just couldn't get a stop when we needed to. Um, that whole second half, the Rams scored on, what, four of their five possessions in the second half. You, you can't have that happen. Yeah. Um, I think 
the obviously it sucks to not have Chris Carson and not, not have Gerald Everett. And the run game was we really were not able to run the ball too effectively. We did a little bit here and there, but not too effectively. Um, and then just a lot of stupid stuff. You know what I mean? Like there were just guys not not as bad as the Debu Samuel play, but there were guys who were just running wide open in the secondary, which I think that's a combination yeah. of the corners and Ken Norton Jr. I'm sorry, like what, Ken Norton Jr. needs to be gone. He's bad. I'm gonna say something right now. I. I I feel like Ken Norton Jr. is catching a lot of flack. I feel like his play calling, people forget that Ken Norton Jr. is just the defensive play caller. He right. does not make the scheme, which I will say is accredited to Pete Carroll. That is Pete Carroll's scheme that he's run his entire career. And I just want to say, running a scheme that only works with the best defense in the history of the game maybe it's not a well, good scheme well what it was is it that requires great play from your corners which we had with the legion of boom obviously but we just we don't have that right now um the other thing we, well I we play talk- so far off and yeah we give so much room in the overall secondary that it, it's i mean the secondary i'm sure i'm sure that they're technically playing where they're supposed to be playing because we run a very heavy zone defense we really right. run very few man so I imagine that the corners are probably playing exactly where they had to be. Just this fact that uh, kind of what I wanted to add is that I feel like the Rams made a great change, which is we played very, we played them very well in the first half. We played them very, very well, honestly. So yeah. uh, uh, the Rams came out, they used a little bit more coverage beaters that clearly found the gaps in the zone. In the first quarter, and in, in like this halfway through the second quarter, I remember thinking this defense is playing really well right now. Mm-hmm. They're making plays. They're playing. They're playing good coverage. This is a very optimistic sh- sign. And then, Rams yeah, just, we know what happens. The rest of the game. Yeah, no. I, I mean, yeah, I would say that. I would say that. Um, you know. The pass rush wasn't great. Daryl Taylor has four sacks this year, which is uh, just fantastic. Daryl Taylor is uh, the pass rush right now. He is the pass rush. Puna, Puna got back there a couple times, I will right. say. For Puna right. not being a pass rushing defensive tackle. Him and Al Woods, like I said, they were monsters today in the run game. They made some pass plays as well. Uh, LJ Collier had a really nice pressure uh, that forced a wide open in completion, I think. No, yeah. no, that was the one to Deshaun Jackson, which should have been an incompletion. But that's going to segue into kind of my big thing about tonight, which is Jamal Adams needs to be better. He, um, I'm so I would so far and, this and, year. I feel like a lot of people. I feel like a lot of people are saying seventeen and a half million to give up a crazy catch when he's he's literally coming off maybe his best back to back weeks as a Seahawk. I feel like that's very unfair to say to him. It it um, is, but at the same time, it's like you got to make those plays. Like that just that can't happen. Right, you can't let that happen right in your face. And unfortunately, that- unfortunately, the way that it kind of worked is that Matt Stafford being hit and underthrowing that ball literally played so well under the Rams' advantage. Where once again, they just found the gap where no defenders were. Jamal Adams was at a full sprint trying to get to Deshaun Jackson. He doesn't know if the ball is being underthrown. So when De- 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 Deshaun Jackson just stops and goes back to that ball, he's still at a full sprint. He can't slow down. He can't re, uh, recover. Yeah. So it, it, that was the big moment tonight. He also had a very not good matchup versus Tyler Higby. Remember, I said that Jamal Adams needed to have a good game. He did not. He did not have a good game. Um, we were also, I, you know, offensively and defensively, we were terrible on third down. Our, our defense was good in uh, up until halftime, but in the second half and the whole game offensively, we were just disgusting on third down it was, you know like i said though in the first in the first half it, it was just a lot of they 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 schemed well that's really all i can say they I, I, and I, I you know halftime adjustments is kind of a load of hooey to me but i mean there was a noticeable difference in how the rams offense was playing after the first half mm-hmm. especially considering that matt stafford's finger was hurt and that, like, um, that's a problem we've had all year. We can't play one good half of football. Every game this year, we've played a good half. We haven't and played we just an haven't exceptional played first half or second half. Right. Um, Last week, we played a great second half. We played a terrible first half. This week, and week's with the Colts, was a good first half. 
bad second half. And it's like, you can't play 30 minutes of good football and expect to win games. And that's what we're doing right now. So yeah. it's just and it's very, in very week one, In week one, we had the benefit of the Colts not being able to capitalize in the second right. half. Right. In week, in last week, we had the advantage of not having the 49ers capitalize in the first half. Mm-hmm. In the it, it, and we never really had a situation of both teams capitalizing at the same time. So one team's playing really well and one team's playing really bad. Right. Today was when both teams capitalized at the same time. Both teams played a relatively bad first half of football, and yeah. in the second half. Uh, they they were kind of on point. Geno Smith was dealing. I really, really loved the play calling in the second half. There were so many times wide receivers were just wide open and yeah. they found the yeah. area in the zone, which is very promising to see considering the last year versus the last year versus kind of these teams, especially the Rams, has led to us has led to there being very few open guys. Uh, whether they're covered by Jalen Ramsey or Darius Williams or whoever. So, you know, I, I I guess a big what if for this game would be what if Russ didn't get hurt on that play and Tyler Lockett makes that catch? Because then arguably that's that might be a touchdown um, or at least a big game to keep the drive alive. We ended up punting on that drive, so we could have Russ yeah. not getting hurt. And we might be able to score points in that drive, which might drastically tra- change how this game went. Yeah. So think about it. If we score a touchdown on that play, Jason Myers makes that field goal, we would have won this game. So it, 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 it's kind of unfortunate just to see how things turned out. And just by the way, how- speaking on Jason Myers for a second, he hadn't missed a field goal all last year, and he's missed three so far this year. What is going on with Jason Myers? Two. Two, and he's missed an extra point. Yeah, man, what is going on yeah. with Jason Myers right now? I mean, that was supposed to be just a lock. Um, and by the way, we can't. I'm gonna end this. I'm gonna end my little uh, comments in this game on one thing. Michael Dixon is the greatest punter in the NFL. Period. Yeah, was, by, by far. Johnny Hecker. Johnny Hecker had he had a good game. Don't get me wrong, but Michael Dixon is has consistently, it has consistently, consistently, just wowed us at punting, which is something that never really happens. So Mike, um, you know, kind of wrapping up, give your final thoughts on this game. Give, give, give an overall grade for this game. Uh, I'll give my final grade and then we'll kind of uh, segue into what the next video will be. I'm going to give, I'm going to give, I'm going to give it an F. Um, bad capitalization, terrible defense, mm-hmm. one less than one good half of football. Um, I give it an F. I'm I'm very upset right now. I think if we were to leave it just to the play, I would probably give it somewhere in the low C's, maybe like a C minus, just to the play. But in the grand scheme of things, I do agree with you. I'm gonna give this game a D. Um, you know, the scheme has to change. It has to change. We give these receivers too much damn space. There's yeah. plays where there's nobody in the middle versus Cooper Cup or Robert Woods. Like, right. how does that happen? That, that, that literally cannot happen. And it's something that happened over and over and over and over again tonight. And the Legion of Room is just continuing to strike. The so, Legion I mean, room. <laughs> it, that's, that's what I'm, I'm dubbing this defense. This is the Legion of Room. This is literally, they give receivers five, 10 yards of separation every single play. So, and, you know, and uh, like you said, the capitalization was a big thing for me. The Rams made a lot of mistakes tonight. Uh, they threw a pick in the red zone actually it was, it was i think it was an and goal situation yeah I'm yeah mistaken. it was a goal yeah second matt stafford, goal yeah matt stafford throws a pick in an angle situation big matt gay misses a field goal that kind of keeps us hovering or miss a pat that kind of keeps us hovering around in this game big mm-hmm. uh the rams give us a minute to drive down and get a really nice short field goal opportunity uh right before half and we get the ball so we'd be up by seven going into half getting that ball like there were so many times where the Rams just, just handed us handed us this and we could not capitalize. So I'm overall gonna give it a D. I would say that the optimistic thing about this game is that I feel like is that I feel like the capitalization is not necessarily just the overall problem of the team, more that it's just stuff not going our way, which you really can't argue 
four, I would say. But like, I mean, if I mean Jason Myers hits a 35 yard field goal, probably nine of every 10 or 10 or eight of every 10 times. So, I mean, you know, once again, like I would just say that that's, that that's just Jason Myers not being himself, which obviously is kind of inflated in this game. But, you know, it is what it is, I guess. You know, Russ probably hits that Tyler Lockett throw most of the time, especially if he doesn't break his finger being pressured by Aaron Donald. Um, but I'm going to give it a D. You know, something has to change. And I feel like it's really landing on the shoulders of Pete Carroll and Ken Norton. And it's getting, and the weight is getting heavier by the second as more and more Seattle fans begin to realize what is going on and the problem that is arising out of this. Because last year, our offense was fantastic and our defense was really, really bad and we were still able to go five and off. Now we're yeah. two and three because our offense is pretty good, but our defense is awful. Awesome. So, we're, you know, the Cowboys are us from last year, this year. Their offense is really, really good, and they have a good play caller, and at least through those points, and they're being able to win games with their offense. But their defense is not good, straight up. Um, we need a playmaker, man. We need a playmaker. Uh, it's supposed to be that's Jamal. Really gonna wrap up. Mm, yep. Yeah. And that's really going to wrap up my thoughts on this video. So, uh, I mean, on this game, um, just stay tuned for next video, which will probably be – uh, I, I I don't know if we're gonna have something in between the steel uh, this game and a Steelers previews considering there's about what like ten days in between those two games, so uh, we'll see about that. But um, yeah, we just gotta rebound because yeah. honestly, looking at the schedule before the season started, I said we were twelve and five, eleven and seven. Uh, I mean eleven six, ten and seventeen. I still think after looking at the schedule a second time. We are that team. I still think that we're on pace for 11 and 6, 10 and 7. I just don't think that that's good enough to contend in this division, which is the main problem. So, you know, once again, I would not freak out about the Seahawks. I don't think that they're a lost cause. I still think they're probably going to be pretty good. We're coming up on a nice light stretch of games with the Steelers, the Saints, and the Jags. So we should be able to take advantage of that at least. Please, God, get two of three. Obviously, we should get three of three, but if we don't get at least two of three, that's very, very bad. So um, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, we will see you in the next video. Peace out. Peace.